Good morning. I'm Maya Wimala, and it's a beautiful Sunday morning here. The sky is overcast, but the sun is definitely peeking through in some directions. So if you feed your feed the birds and the squirrels like I do, you notice how chubby they're getting. And some friends of mine have said they're chubbier this year than ever. A uh, heavy, long winter. Ooh, some uh, disconnect problems. I hope you're not having them. So, uh, it's today I have to make sure I go and get more, uh, get more seeds for them. They can still run up and down the trees faster than anything, so I guess it's not too chubby. I had a wonderful gift waiting for me when I got home from Tennessee, and it was, it's a book. I don't know if you can, it's Wisdom is Bliss, and it's by Robert Thurman, and the subtitle is, so the title is Wisdom is Bliss. Four Friendly Fun Facts That Can Change Your Life. <laughs> so Allison said she loved the title as well. Four Friendly Fun Facts That Can Change Your Life. And Robert Thurman is a very serious, uh, very uh, well-known around the world uh, Buddhist teacher, predominantly in the, the uh, Tibetan tradition. So I love that he has, uh, I love that he has a, uh, a uh, funny subtitle. And I haven't really begun reading the book uh, just getting home. I've been, I've kind of flipped through it. So I just wanted to read um, a section, not a whole section. This is just a couple of pages. And I thought this could be interesting. And he's a Westerner with a, his teacher, the Dalai Lama is one of his teachers. So I want to read right at the very beginning, the first chapter, or it might even be in the preface, let's see. It's still in the preface. So it's called, the section is called, So What is Buddhism Anyway? And it's interesting, I think you'll like it. Today in the modern world, Buddhism, as represented by its best leaders, such as H.H. H. the Dalai Lama, is not a religion seeking to convert you. It is not asking you to drop your birth religion or your secularism. Rather, it offers you a time-tested method of developing your own intelligent understanding of reality. Ridding yourself of living in denial on any level. For example, we usually live with the denial of death. You don't think about it, you are afraid it will depress you, so you have no motivation to look into it, and you don't want to face it. You think to yourself, we'll all be zipped up in a body bag and then we'll be reduced to ashes, or something like that. We do allow mourning, but we nevertheless keep up the denial of death, especially our own, whenever upcoming, but in, uh, for, whenever upcoming, but inevitable death. <laughs> if you live in denial of reality, you will invest your life energy in fruitless occupations. You will want to live in a multi-million dollar mansion, but all its rooms and views will mean nothing once you die. You still pursue it because of your denial of death. This is an impermanent reality. It is a changeable entity. But if you open up to death, do meditate on it. This body of mine, this identity of mine as inhabiting my coarse body, I won't keep them. What I do now, maintain house, food, youth, beauty, pleasure, all will be fruitless in the long run. Of course, you should keep your health to be able to use your mind and body to good effect. But your main effort should be, what am I? Where am I? What should I do here and now? You will focus on how to remain conscious when going beyond your death, on the quality of your continuation. When you do not live in denial of death, but wake up, 
think about it and meditate it upon and meditate upon it, you will be preparing for a good continuation while becoming more conscious about your day-to-day -day living. You will therefore live more realistically. If you are a Westerner, or anyone really, and you don't know much about Buddha and want to get educated, start reading some Buddhist text. You can keep going to your current religion or to your MIT Temple of Secularism to maintain your belonging to the supportive community you grew up in, but try to expand your education by using the Buddhist literatures and therapeutic practices to become more realistic and have more fun. You can do yoga to learn about your body, where the cramps and blockages are in your muscles, your circulatory system. You can do mindfulness meditation to learn how emotions arise from ingrained ideas and rote thinking, giving you more freedom and more critical leverage over what you believe and think and how you react in situations. All of this takes you in the direction of greater realism. And there are many people out there who will try to help you learn more, all without imposing Buddhism as a religion. Okay, okay, be surprised and skeptical. No matter, I challenge you to take a look at this completely new perspective. Just like the Buddha, yes, you too can be a scientist, test these teachings, and ultimately master life in unbreakable joy and overcome all difficulties if you dare take up the challenge. You too can know freedom from suffering through awakening to enlightenment. This enlightenment I am talking about is totally rational, practical, in solid touch with reality, it is rightly called realistic. At the same time, it is playfully in darkening, ecstatically transcending, sensually and, emotional, and emotionally fulfilling. What I say should seem surprising, even too good to be true, hard to imagine to be sure, but when you can endure even a bit of cognitive dissonance, you can open up a new horizon of possibility. Once you glimpse the possibility of enlightenment, you'll recognize that it was always there all around and within you, but you just didn't pay attention to it. Too good to be true, the good has to be false, and the true has to be bad. Who says so? On what basis? See, we are already becoming scientists. Buddha fun, <laughs> he's, he's putting this, phrase, this term in quote, Buddha fun, uh, which must be his own <laughs> expression. Buddha fun means you can have it all, you, yourself, human, American, Hindu, Taoist, Jew, Christian, Muslim, secular humanist, Buddhist, red, black, white, pink, really, brown, yellow, blue, green, you, individual citizen of planetary society, you there. You are already a relatively enlightened person just by virtue of being human. When you dare to know your own real biology at all levels of the material and the mental and the spiritual and the cosmic, this becomes crystal clear. You can develop full confidence in your own enlightenment if you're willing to educate yourself in this teaching. This book can be your golden key to open the door to Buddhism-based science and technology, which will enable you to inhabit your own experience more fully the really fun experiences you already have yet only fleetingly enjoyed. Okay, so if I'm already enlightened, why do I suffer so much? We have pain in life because we don't realistically know the truth that we are enlightened. Here's the shocker. Being in touch with true reality is so powerful 
that it completely overwhelms any pain, any loss, even of limb or life. Well, I'm going to read one more paragraph because this is, this is really enticing, isn't it? This is this very, just one paragraph, emptiness and freedom. In talks I give around the world, I am beginning to refer to this reality by, whoops, emptiness or sunyata in Sanskrit is an absolute negation, absolute in the sense that it only negates and does not imply anything else. Now, this sunyata or emptiness is part of the Mahayana tradition. That's just my aside, okay. Emptiness means that all relative things are empty of any non-relative core or essence. Indian scientists discovered the decimal system and sunya was the word they chose for zero. It derives from a verb root, shvi, which means to swell. As a seed swollen by moisture opens, creating an empty space within itself, a void, a free space. But we think of free as something good and positive, whereas emptiness or voidness is intimidating, as it seems so close to nothingness. So freedom is a word to watch here as an encouraging synonym of the famous and still useful emptiness, which we will explore later on. So, then he goes on, he has, this is written in a very, um, it's easy reading, I think, from a scholar. So this is in the, let's see, I guess I've been reading from the first, the chapter, chapter one called The Buddha Path. So, uh, thank you, Allison. She's my She's my fairy uh, godmother in, in ter for, as far as books are concerned. So this one I think I will really enjoy reading. So it's uh, good to think about that the idea that we are already, there, we're already enlightened. It's already part of our basic human nature. We just have to open up to it open up to it and find the spaciousness of that. So we often say that Nibbana is, uh, is ridding ourselves of all defilements, letting them all go. Defilements based on greed and anger and uh, delusion. So that's, that's all within us, right? That's all, that's all something that we can drop and let go of. So it's a, it's a beautiful notion. This is already within us. And I think even, because, even though there's some, some differences and uh, this isn't exactly the wording that we might use in our tradition, Theravadan tradition, I don't think will be, I don't think in this book it's going to be any problem at all. The basics are the same. So I'll be letting you know what the four friendly fun facts are. We won't read this whole book, but I'll be reading it on my own and may pick and choose some things to share with you. So why don't we sit together with the time we have left? And I hope that was interesting reading for you. I think uh, just thinking about that, that Nibbana is something we can experience in the here and now. And it doesn't mean it just it comes upon us uh, haphazardly because we do have to, to uh, be awake. We do have to be mindful and attentive and awake and aware and dealing with reality just the way it is. Um, with the holidays coming up, hopefully you, oh, thank you. Thank you, Eva. She's put uh, in the comments, there will be uh, the book and how to get it on amazon.com. So thank you, Eva. Let's sit together 
and then I'll be sure when I post this to have the comments there. So we don't have a lot of time to sit together, but I think we can just, uh, holidays coming up this week, Thanksgiving, which we know then follows extremely, that's very close. It's one month away from Christmas. And I noticed even when I was driving uh, back from Tennessee, so much Christmas music was already on the radios. And I, even in Tennessee, the decorations were up. We went to uh, the lights going on in the little town where my brother lives and my niece works in a big, uh, in a big office building that's there and their company had a Christmas uh, open house. And this was, this was last week. So it's like the holidays can't start too soon for a lot of people. So hope, hopefully we keep the spirit, the true spirit of these holidays alive instead of the material. We probably all have enough. So um, just think of others during the holidays and I think that can help a lot of us who might be feeling a little isolated or feeling lonely for family or friends that we haven't seen in a while. Um, reach out. So. Let's sit and let's just be with our breath, be aware. Just allow your body to relax. Let go of any tension that you feel in the body. Allow the body to relax with each breath in, draw in that energy. And as you breathe out, just let go. Let your shoulders move down. Just let them relax with the exhale. Let your hands unclasp. And have a gentle, very light focus on your breath. Feel the rise and fall of each breath. This is what we see in nature. We see the rise and fall of all living things. The impermanence. We breathe in and we breathe out. Just let your thoughts come and go. No need to, fa to feed them with your attention. Be aware to what's coming to you through your sense doors, through your touch, your taste, your smell, your hearing. You can be aware of light even behind your closed eyelids. Be 
Be aware of feelings in the body. Just focus on pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. Aware of what's arising within you. You can be aware of your thoughts as they arise, but then just let them go. Just notice the feeling tone. Pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. Everything rising. Just come back to your breath whenever you get distracted. And don't make any judgments on how you feel or being distracted or whatever's arising within you. Just observe it. Learn to understand what's rising, how it feels, what the tone is. And we 
include the mind as one of our six senses. Now to end our time together, we can share merit. May everything that we do and think and say today be done not only for our own benefit, but for the benefit of all living beings. May each one of us be well, be content, and be at peace. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. It means a lot to be with you. So I'll see you on, uh, or be with you on Tuesday. <laughs>